My name is John T. Claypole um, and I am Director of Arts at the BBC. As Director of Arts at, at the BBC, I'm responsible for the BBC's arts and cultural programming. So um, I, uh, I worked for the BBC for a long time as a documentary director, making documentaries about the arts and I now uh, 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 am director for the whole BBC of all our arts programming. What I like most are the arts. I'm just very passionate about the arts and that means theatre, performance, books, music, film. That's what, I, that's what I love most of all. And then working for the BBC and doing programming programs about the arts, you have the chance to uh, reach millions of people, get millions of people uh, interested in watching and enjoying the arts. So, so, so that's what I like most, is that opportunity to get the arts to a bigger and bigger audience. My advice, if, if you're stammering you, you, or you have a stammer, my advice is don't don't apologise and never talk about it in negative terms because the thing that held me back most and all through my 20s and 30s I was allowing my stammer to influence what jobs I went for, what I was trying to do, what I did and didn't do and it was only later that I realised and, and, and I assumed that what was holding me back in those situations was the reactions people were going to have to me and have to the fact I stammered. And what I only realized quite recently is that most people don't think that way at all. What was holding me back was my own uh, understanding of, uh, of my stammer and the way I saw my stammer. So I was projecting onto other people how I felt about myself. And so my advice is, don't apologise and don't talk about it in negative terms. You're, it's very easy to say I have a bad stammer, um, but your stammer is part of you, it, it's who you are and you shouldn't talk about yourself as bad in any way and most people won't even see it that way either. I, I have had issues at work because of my stammer in, in the past but they were, they were looking back I realised they were issues I created so I on many occasions would, in quite an important pitching meeting or in a public speaking moment, I would, uh, I would be blocking on words and rather than admitting I stammer or allowing myself to block, I would be uh, desperately trying to find other words and as a result I would speak in a fairly inarticulate strange way and the people I was talking to wouldn't realise why I was doing it. So. I've spoken to people who knew me um, back then or encountered me in certain ways and they will say, oh I didn't realise you had stammer, I, but I didn't think you were a bit inarticulate or a bit hesitant in the way you speak. And uh, so I, I, I allowed myself to um, uh, uh, to present myself in, in a way that I think was bad for my communication skills because I was so worried about what other people would think. So, so, so once again, I, I don't think it's problems I've had with colleagues, I think it's problems I've created for myself. I think if my 13 year old self saw me now, um, um, he, I, uh, would be uh, pleasantly surprised at how little negativity my history of stammering and and the extent to which I still stammer a, li a little bit affects affects my self-esteem or my day-to-day -day life because when I was 13 it was such a source of fear and felt like such an ob obstacle um, I, I would just be very pleasantly surprised to see that over the course of my life it became less and less um, relevant and, and, and problematic for me.